Ex-NSD Group editor Mustafa Kamil Mohamad Janor is making a comeback as Media Prima Executive Director. Mustafa Kamil quit the AMNO controlled newspaper in 2016 after admitting to struggle with his conscience with regards to NST's coverage of 1MDB. Mustafa Kamil will now be leading the news and editorial operations at Media Prima. His focus will be on optimizing the group's news resources in line with Media Prima's business transformation efforts. He has also been appointed to the boards of System Television Malaysia and NSTP, effective today. Mustafa Kamil has 26 years of experience in journalism. He held various positions in NST, including as NST Foreign Correspondent in New York, Business Times Managing Editor and NST Group Editor. He reports to Media Prima MD Tato Kamal Khalid, who praises him as a highly respected figure within the journalism fraternity. Kamal says Mustafa Kamil's experience and knowledge will be valuable as the group continues to evolve. Linus Corp CEO and MD Amanda Lakas says the rare earth miner is committed to Malaysia after spending 3 billion ringgit in capital investment from the start of operations. This comes after the government announced the Linus Evaluation Committee review will be led by Guantan MP Fuzia Saleh, who has openly opposed its operations. Lakas appealed to the administration today for an objective and scientific review amid concerns that Putrajaya could close down Linus's six year old plant. She says all Linus asks is for time to adapt to any new policies introduced by the newly elected government. She adds that the miner will certainly do everything it can to adapt to the requirements of governments in every jurisdiction it operates. In response, Fuzia said the panel's review will focus on the Gebeng plant's radioactive waste emissions. The three-month review will also be looking at the safety, health, social and environmental impact of the plant. Linus's operating license is up for renewal in September 2019. Petronas and its JV participants have taken a final investment decision on LNG Canada, a major liquefied natural gas project in Kitimat, British Columbia. President and Group CEO Tan Sri Wan Zulkifli Wan Arifin called it a significant milestone for Petronas and for the energy industry in Canada. He said that it is a testimony of the strong collaboration among its partners and stakeholders who share the same aspiration of delivering long-term value via LNG. The LNG export facility includes the design, construction and operation of a LNG plant as well as facilities for storage and export. Wanzul said that this is the first LNG project in Canada and that it would pave the way for Petronas to add value to its gas resources in the North Monty area and strengthen its supply portfolio for LNG to Asian markets. Other partners include Royal Dutch Shell holding 40%, PetroChina holding 15%, Mitsubishi Corp holding 15% and Korea Gas Corp holding 5%. Matrix Concepts is proceeding with its plans to co-develop an Islamic financial district in Jakarta, Indonesia. Its partners in this venture are an Indonesian consortium comprising Bangun Kosambi Success and Niko Securitas Indonesia. Matrix says this proposed JV affirms its maiden step to establish its presence in Indonesia. It also opens the door for the three parties to cooperate on other potential projects in Indonesia. A JV company named Fincenterindo Satu has been formed to undertake the development, which will be constructed on a 3.6-hectare plot of land in the West Kosambi village in the Kosambi district. BKS will hold a 40% equity interest in the JV, while Matrix and NSI will hold a 30% stake each. The project is expected to be completed in about six months from the date of the JV agreement. Matrix says its 30% equity participation, amounting to 124 million ringgit, will be funded via internal funds, bank borrowings and possibly proceeds from an equity fundraising exercise. UEM Sunrise is confident of achieving its 1.2 billion ringgit sales target this year as it looks to launch projects worth between 350 million ringgit and 500 million ringgit in the fourth quarter of FY18. As at end June, the group has secured sales of 663.8 million ringgit, while unbuilt sales remain a healthy 4.9 billion ringgit. According to Group MD and CEO Anwar Sharin Abdul Ajib, both its sales and launches remain on track. Separately, UAM also tied up with Grab Malaysia to extend cashless services, 
such as transportation, dining and shopping to customers in and around Publica and Iskandar Putri. Anwar says the main aim of the partnership is to create a cashless environment and provide convenience. UEM recorded a net profit of 213.8 million ringgit in the second quarter of FY18, compared with a net loss of 9.8 million ringgit a year ago. This was thanks to higher contribution from land sales, gain from projects, development cost savings and lower operating expenses. Revenue rose to 573.4 million ringgit due to recognition of land sales and good construction progress on several projects.